we wanted to do this because we've done this before, and as the family of God, we always think it's significant to communicate with God's people, so uh, we didn't know how many people would show up, if there would be a lot or only a few, and uh, this really is for you, because uh, we'd want to just communicate as we care about uh, making sure the body of Christ, the family of God knows what's going on. So there's just a couple of things, each of these we're going to cover briefly. Um, the goal is that this part through number six will take about 30 minutes or less. So we'll present these, and then if you have questions, which is really what we wanted this time for, was that there were questions or conversation that you wanted, that we would then open it up so that you could ask the questions, have the conversation that we would have as the body of Christ. So that's kind of how we're going to flow. Um, but we are going to start uh, just with a short, uh, quick devotion and uh, prayer um, as we go through this. Uh, we are reminded that a part of the reason we're doing this is because uh, this last season of ministry has been a little bit different than any other season of ministry, probably in the history of the church, maybe or at least the history of the recent church, and a lot of different things that have been going on. And a part of why we wanted to do this is because uh, this is one of those situations where uh, there's not a manual for how to go through this season, right? Um, you know, the pastors joke, and I'm, I know the, the, with the teachers now, it's none of us took a class called uh, teaching in a pandemic or in pastoring during a pandemic or something like that. And so every church is doing things a little bit different. Every church is making decisions a little bit differently. And so we wanted the opportunity just to have that conversation with you about where we are at, what has been, what is, and then if you have questions, probably what will be. But our devotion today is 2 Corinthians 1. Uh, I just want to briefly read these words to you. It says this, starting in verse, 2 Corinthians 1, starting verse 15, it says, because I was sure of this, I wanted to come to you first so that you may have a second experience of grace. I wanted to visit you on my way to Macedonia, Paul is saying this, and to come back to you from Macedonia and have you send me on my way to Judea. Was I vacillating when I wanted to do this? Did I make my plans according to the flesh, ready to say yes, yes, and no, no at the same time? As surely as God is faithful, our word to you has not been yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, whom we proclaimed among you, was not yes and no, but him it is always yes. For all of the promises of God find their yes in Jesus, and that is why it is through him that we utter our amen to God and to his glory. So I was thinking about going through this season. I was thinking about how much, uh, how easy it is to vacillate back and forth right? Constantly, uh, there's hope, there's no hope. Do this, don't do this. Uh, this is good, no, it's not anymore, right? Like this constant vacillating yes and no, and yes and no, and yes and no. And, and I'm reading this section and going, you know what? Paul talked about this too, <laughs> where he says, if we make plans according to the flesh, uh, we're ready to say yes and no, and no and yes, and back and forth and back and forth, because according to the flesh, we don't always have the answers, and so we're always going, okay, now we know this, so we do this, and then we hear this, and, and it can seem like there's a back and forth vacillating. But, but Paul says, but if you find your answers in the promises of God, you will always be yes, for they are always firmly established in Jesus Christ. That's why whenever we make decisions or we talk about what the future is going to be like, our question ultimately comes back to, what does it mean to faithfully follow Jesus? How do we faithfully follow Jesus? Because in Jesus, in his promises, yeses are yes and noes are noes. Not in the world that goes back and forth. And so as we talk about what has been and what is, um, may we be reminded as the people of God that as we make decisions here at Grace, we will always make decisions based on the promises of God, his faithfulness, making yes, yes, and no, no, according to what it means to faithfully follow the promises of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to always look to you for the answers, to faithfully follow you and your promises. Lord, there is so much going on in this world and it is easy in the midst of the world we live in to make our yeses, yeah, our noes and our noes, yeses and switch back and forth and, 
and our heads are spinning sometimes because of all of the information and all of the data and all of the news and all of the media and just everything that's going on, our heads seem to be spinning. And yet, when we find our promises in you and we look to how we make decisions by being faithful to your word and your gifts and your promises to us, we know that as we faithfully follow you, you will be glorified in us and you will continue to empower your church. So we pray for your blessing as we spend time today talking about the ministry that is taking place here at Grace. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're just going to uh, briefly just talk a couple of ministry updates on things that are going on um, in a couple of our areas. Uh, the reason these three are first is, is we have seen over this last season since March 15th, right, that's pretty much when all of this began, the, the lockdown. I still remember that week very vividly because I remember uh, it was Friday and Deb and I were talking, our principal, and we were saying, hey, uh, what do you think about what's going to go on? And, and we said, you know what, no one else is, is uh, going to virtual, so let's stay in person. And an hour later, Menominee Falls went virtual, and we're like, oh boy, all right? So we depend on busing, so that means that that completely changes our plans because of busing. And then, then uh, we're saying, all right, we're going to go virtual for two weeks. We'll be fine after two weeks. And then uh, that didn't just last two weeks. And we, I still remember sitting with the staff, and we were saying to ourselves at staff, hey, you know what? Um, all we have to do is make it to April 6th and we'll be back in person and, and we'll have a full Good Friday, Monday, Thursday, and Easter in June. Do you remember when we said that? <laughs> right? We're like, we'll fill the sanctuary in June. And then uh, we as a staff said, you know what? October. October, that's going to be the end of it. And now, you know, like, you just don't know in this season, right? And it's changing. And, and three of the ministries that probably had the biggest changes were these three. So let me just talk about those for a second. So, um, for worship, um, current worship right now obviously is coming back slow. It's coming back slow everywhere. As I talk to other pastors, uh, both in our area and across the nation, it's coming back very slowly. Um, before we added outdoor worship, uh, we were averaging about 225 in person in worship. Um, now that we've added outdoor worship, I don't know what it was today, but we're at about 325 to 335 in worship, adding outdoor worship. For those of you who have come to outdoor worship, uh, you've seen that we have a lot more people who feel comfortable in that environment, being outside, and we're just going to continue to do that weather permitting all the way until the end of October. Um, obviously, we never know when winter's coming, right? <laughs> it's, it's Wisconsin. So, so that's the plan, and then the weather could change that. Um, online worship, though, is still strong. Uh, we get about, you know, some people have asked this, Pastor, how many people are still watching our services? So for our traditional services, uh, there's about 60 units who watch, and for contemporary, about 158 units. Now, why I say units is um, when it comes to views, you don't know how many people are in a room when it's on the TV or the computer. So in my family, when we were watching be before we were able to come back in person, one view would equal eight people, right? So it's different. So when you do some of the research, they would say probably for our traditional service, you multiply it by 1.5, and for our contemporary service, you could probably, based on how many families we have at Grace that come to contemporary, multiply it by 2.5 to 3.5. So, so that's a really good sign of how many people are still connected and engaged to what is going on at Grace. Um, right now, how online works is that we videotape our 5 o'clock service. Those who have been here have seen that. We put the, the camera right there in the middle, videotape it, and uh, then we have someone who uh, puts it together and staves up till about 2 o'clock in the morning making sure it gets uploaded. So... We know that's a short-term solution. That cannot be a long-term solution because that just isn't healthy. So we're going to be doing some things that change it. I'll talk about in a minute. But we do have at this time, if you think about it, um, four different worship opportunities that take place. You have 5 o'clock contemporary in the sanctuary, 8 o'clock traditional in the sanctuary, 
10 o'clock contemporary outside, and then you have the online. And that allows us to try to engage as many people as possible. Um, our Saturday night service, the reason that we need that uploaded on Saturday night is what we found is we did have two weeks, I believe it was, where we uploaded by Sunday night or Monday, and the number of people who watched it dropped in half. Because when do you go to worship usually? Sunday morning, right? So, so, and we've seen that, and in talking to other pastors, they've recognized that as well. So that's some of the struggle that, that we have. But we do have those worship opportunities um, for people to engage in it. And for our future, what we are working on is what we're calling an online worshiping community. Um, some people call it live streaming, but we don't want to just think about it as live streaming because live streaming can be like watching TV, a movie, or Netflix, where you can turn it on and walk away, put it in the background, right? Well, pastor, we watch it while we're doing things around the living room, right? Like we want people engaged. And so uh, we'll be doing it live. That's the goal is to have it live. Um, but in order to do that, we're having to do some things here at Grace in order to make it possible because we can't live stream with what we have right now. So first of all, our, our internet's not powerful enough to do that. So we're actually upgrading our internet uh, with a memorial that was given and is being allowed to use to upgrade internet. And then we're going to need to upgrade the equipment that we have because the equipment we have basically doesn't help do anything with live streaming. So uh, when we had somebody come in, we had a couple companies come in and look at our sanctuary. They said, you know what, this is a beautiful, perfect sanctuary for in-person worship. It is, isn't it? We are truly blessed with a beautiful sanctuary for in-person worship. They said, but it is terribly set up for online worship. They said, the amount of light that comes in, and some of you know that because there are days where you probably want sunglasses on while you're in the pews, right? And the amount of light that comes in, that um, the technology you have, and the fact that some of your technology now is old because uh, we moved in here in 2011, so... We are approaching the ninth year in here, and how fast does technology get out of date? Real fast nowadays, right? And so, so there, are, there is going to be an expense to the te technology. It at actually is going to be the major investment. And I'm bringing that up because we're actually going to, as soon as we put it together, going to need to make a congregational appeal to ask uh, you as God's people to consider giving towards that. It is an expensive endeavor. We're going to be using some of uh, restricted funds that were for worship and online worship that were given very early on in this. Uh, we're going to contact some families to ask if we can use memorials towards this because uh, this would be something that, that those who are homebound are able to use. And we actually have recognized that this online worship is actually going to be a great benefit to those who are our shut-ins because they'll be able to actually live watch the services at home. The goal as well is the reason we're calling it a community is so that we can actually have somebody who is engaging people. There are actually platforms, believe it or not, that allow us to live stream our service while somebody is engaging people online who are watching it so that during the prayers they can type into something like a little chat box, what are your prayer requests? And people can put their prayer requests in. Or can, can say things like, hey, a pastor just asked you to people in the sanctuary to talk among themselves about this. What is your answer to that question? Right? And, and we can have engagement and community so that people are less likely to walk away. So, um, but we're looking through different things like that to, to be able to do this, but we are going to have to make a congregational appeal. Some of the other ways that it's a blessing is that if we have people who are sick at home, you can engage with it. Uh, if you're on vacation, you can be engaged with it. Uh, we'll be able to, as well, do weddings and funerals so that those can be viewed. So if, you have a, if, there, if your family has a wedding or a funeral here, but you have people who can't make it, we'll be able to stream that and give a link so that people could engage with that. That's the goal, but obviously the expense, and so we'll be making a congregational appeal to try to make that possible. So... Um, so that's worship. Uh, when it comes to school ministry, obviously there's been a lot going on with that. I first of all need to recognize, uh, and many of you do already, the amount of time, energy, and effort 
that those who are in our school ministry, uh, our extended care, our teachers, our principal, who have put into uh, making the school year possible, both last year and this year, because just like with worship, with our education, we basically went from not being able to do anything online to doing everything online like that. I mean, and that took a lot of time, energy, effort, and resources from our teachers and from our uh, staff that serves in our school ministry, and that it was a huge blessing. So this year, uh, where we're at right now is our enrollment is at 214. So I know some of you, is that up or down? It is down, but I'll tell you why it's down. We have about 20 individuals, plus or minus a few, who have basically said, uh, we'll come back. We are coming back to grace once we feel safe, but until then, we're just going to do it in our homes. We're just going to do homeschooling. And so that's why that number is, and, and we are seeing that in a lot of places. It's, it's not just in our school. This is in public schools. It's in other Lutheran schools. It's everywhere where families are saying, you know what, we're just going to keep our kids at home. We're going to do homeschooling with them. And then when we feel it is safe to go back to school, we'll go back to school. But for uh, those who are enrolled at Grace, uh, we do have full, um, full five days, all day, every day, in person, in the classrooms. We've done a lot of work. The teachers have done a lot of work to prepare their classrooms, to socially distance their desks, to create the environment possible so that families feel safe having their children come to school. So there's a lot that goes into that. Um, the policies that came into that, because I know a lot of people will say, well, how did the policies work? How did they come into play? Uh, those policies were done in coordination with, uh, number one, talking with our health department, both in our county and state, because we do fall under their jurisdiction as a school. Uh, number two, with talking with uh, our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, South Wisconsin District, with other principals, with our education executive, so in conversation in that place, and then among staff. One of the things we value here at Grace is that all of our ministries all function under the same group of policies because we're all one. We, we work together. And so it came about in those conversations with those three different groups, South Wisconsin District of the LCMS, with state and local health officials and with our congregation or with our, our staff. So, um, but we are doing in person. We also have a virtual option for families to be a part of that. Uh, speaking of the school ministry, um, I was asked to put a plug in at this time. So this is uh, the one commercial break that we have in this. And that is on, on, on September 12th, there is a golf auction. So if you would like to be a part of the golf auction, uh, we would love for you to sign up and be a part of that. Uh, there are brochures, see, I told you it's a commercial. There are brochures that you can pick up that are located at our Welcome Center. So we'd love for you to be a part of that. Um, that really is a blessing. That helps to have a lot of the resources, and some of that as well goes to scholarships for some of our kids who their families can't afford to go to Grace, but this allows them to be a part of our family at Grace. So it is a huge blessing in many ways. So, And then finally, um, student ministry. Uh, there has obviously been a lot of changes with that as well, both on Sunday mornings and on Sunday evenings with youth group and confirmation that needed to take place. Uh, before we do that, um, because this happened while we were virtual, so we've been trying to introduce Olivia every chance we get. So I'm going to embarrass her and ask Olivia to stand up. So Olivia Johnson is our DCE intern for this year. And uh, so we're going to welcome her again this morning. Uh, so, and she's going to serve in multiple different areas. So she's, uh, Christine Young is her supervisor. She's going to be working in some of our children and youth ministries. She's going to be working on a college ministry so we can have a ministry to our college age students. Uh, she's partnering with uh, Pastor Klatt to work on some adult Bible study opportunities and, and missions and women's Bible studies. So, so she has her hands in a lot of different things. So uh, we're just blessed to have her with us over this year. And yes, she does from, come from Concordia, Nebraska. So we now have more Concordia, Nebraska than Concordia, Mequon on staff. So um, 
in the, in the spring, there were a lot of online virtual opportunities, obviously because we had to. And Christine Young did a great job of making available on a, on a weekly basis children's and youth ministry for our families. Um, so, and that all was online, and we had opportunities for families to engage in that. Over the summer, we did Vacation Bible School, Generate High School Youth Leadership Retreat in person and virtual, so we had different options there. And now coming into this new year, we're working on plans that will be released about how we're going to do both in person and some virtual ministry for our children and youth. But obviously, uh, there's a lot that goes into that as well, because it may sound like, well, just take the lesson and put it up online. There's a lot more that goes into that than just videotape and throw it up for, on, on, on the, the website or on the internet. I mean, same thing with doing virtual with our teachers. There's a lot more that goes into that, and it adds a greater complexity to it. So uh, if you were just doing one or the other, that is still complex. It's just at least it's one or the other. Doing both adds a greater complexity to it. But uh, our staff has done an outstanding job putting both of those together. Um, in our adult ministries, uh, we continue to do things with our brown bag Bible study. Pastor Klatt continues to teach that. It has both in person and then it's videotaped and put online. So whether you're in person or you want something in your home, you can have that. And one of the things that we have loved and we're going to continue to do is at 10 a.m. on Facebook, uh, we do a 10 a.m. five-minute devotion every day except on Sundays. And uh, that what we've done with that is uh, Pastor Clad has built that off the weekend message. So whatever our weekend message is for that Sunday, Monday through Saturday will be a theme that is based off of the message. So it allows us to continue that message throughout the week, Sunday throughout the week. So um, that's been a huge blessing. Uh, mops, uh, mothers of preschool students, uh, which our deaconess Christiana oversees, has been meeting and doing some great ministry as well. Uh, we continue to work with Grace Commons and uh, partner with them and looking at more and more ways. Obviously, it's hard to get into places right now. So our visitation has changed a little bit in terms of calling people, engaging people uh, on, uh, on phone calls. It's, it's been a much different process to do visitation just because of how hard it is to get into uh, like the Gables or the Arboretum or things like that. Um, if you're interested in information on Grace Commons, though, um, the place to call is not here. We keep getting asked, so should we call Grace? Should we call the office? We actually don't have anything to do with finding out prices or finding out room available. That's all handled by the Grace Commons. So that's all done over there. So uh, much more details about all of this is going to be at our voters' assembly. Our voters' assembly is on September 28th, so we'll give a lot more details about that. And we, we do that every year, the voters' assembly, because that's part of us coming together again. And per our Constitution, we need to have that voters' assembly, so September 28th. So uh, Generosity, because I know that uh, many times God's people are concerned about where are we at financially. So uh, how do our financial resources look currently? Uh, 2019 to 2020, we had a really strong year. I mean, on, so on March 15th, if you remember that day, uh, we were about 51,000 in the black, giving-wise, and, and that was awesome. And that, when we talked internally among the staff, the way we view that is, that was God allowing us a season of plenty, think Joseph, right, in Egypt, for the season that was to come. And, and have we seen a decline in generosity since then? We absolutely have, and some of that has has gone to, A, it's easier to be disengaged in worship, so it's easier to be disengaged financially, but where we've actually seen it more is we've had people who are here at Grace who have been laid off, or they have taken pay cuts, or things like that, and so that affects their generosity. But at the end of the 2019-2020 year, we actually finished very strong. We actually met our $1.6 million goal that we have every year for plate and envelope. And, uh, and, and I think Tony and I talked about this, that outside of the first year of a capital campaign, that's, this year was the first time we've ever hit 1.6 in plate and envelope. And that's, I think, a great thing to celebrate among the people of God, that, that we actually hit that target, even having a much slower 
March through June in terms of generosity. Um, we've actually then seen that coming out of that year to date, July through August, our generosity has actually been up over last year, which is also a huge blessing because we know that uh, especially this year, our generosity in many ways is going to help us to continue to do the ministry God's called us to do. Uh, with enrollment a little bit down for obvious reasons with the world we live in and COVID and, and things changing and some things we need to do with online worship, that generosity takes on, on a high importance. So uh, we're just very thankful to you as God's people for the way that you are giving generously to what God is doing here at Grace. So, um, and expense-wise, we have really worked to keep expenses down. Um, in the spring, we did everything possible to keep our expenses down. Uh, since we went virtual, we closed a lot of uh, the campus at Kenwood down with electricity and water and, and everything like that. And uh, we did as much as we could here on this campus as well. And so, so we were able to manage expenses during that time. We did do the six-month principal deferment um, that uh, uh, was so that we would have just a little bit of margin because we didn't know what the season was going to be like. The blessing right now is this, and the promise that we made to you as God's people because we wanted to take care of the debt is that if we didn't need that margin to continue to take care of our staff and to continue to do the ministry God called us to, that we would take that, those resources to pay down the debt put them in a restricted fund, and at the time where we felt comfortable and things were in a stable place, we would put all that back on the debt so that we wouldn't be behind in our payments. And uh, it is a great thing to say that we are continuing to put that money in that reserve account, and we are still on pace to make that full payment so that we won't have to extend the debt six months and extend the life of how long it takes. So what a wonderful, blessed place that is. So that's where we're at with principal and debt retirement. Um, I know people have asked me, okay, pastor, but how about the ministry facility expansion? Because we were talking about how we wanted to be one campus again. That right now is on, those planning is on a little bit of a hold right now for obvious reasons. Uh, we need to kind of get through this season, see where we're at, see where we're at financially, see where generosity is at. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we're not doing some things behind the scenes to put us in the place so that once we are sure we can move forward, we are ready to pick up right away. And so we're putting together some plans on capital improvement, things that we're just going to have to replace anyways, whether it's 20 years from now or five years from now, right? So like the roof or the HVAC, things like that, and just have schedules for those things. So that's, that's where we're at with the ministry. Facility expansion will continue to to look at that, continue to pray about it, but obviously we need to get through this season and see where we're at at the end of it. So, and then uh, reaching out in love because that is a part of generosity. Most times we think generosity, we think what goes in the offering plate. But we've actually come through a great season of generosity in terms of uh, we've had almost a monthly blood drive here at Grace. And we have just had so many people sign up for that. And so uh, Pastor Klatt, working with John Schultz, has does done, and Acts of Grace have done an amazing job to constantly have blood drives here at Grace using the commons so that we can be a blessing in that way. We have a good Samaritan fund that people have given generously towards that we've actually been able to use to care for uh, people who have lost jobs and have needed help with their rent or with groceries or with electric bills. And we've been able to really reach out in love that way as a congregation. We've had food drives for the food pantries, and uh, Christiana told me this week that uh, through our sewing ministry, we have sewed over a thousand of those cloth masks, over a thousand cloth masks that we have given away. Oh, what an amazing ministry that is that God has blessed us with for m very many years. So, so we've done a lot of things to continue to not just think about ourselves, but to think about our community. Because during a season like this, it's really easy to think about us, Right? Like, like, how do we just take care of ourselves? Like, the world around us is collapsing or, or things are going crazy all around us. So let's just hide inside of our walls and make sure we take care of ourselves. But that's never been what the church is about. Right? Like, when you look at the history of the church, when the world around it is, is, is crumbling or, or seemingly tearing apart and things are going crazy, it's when the church is at its best. Because the church is going outside of its walls, not huddling inside. 
And that's what we want to continue to do. So um, we'll talk a lot more about these things at our uh, at our State of Grace Voters Assembly as well, but over this next year, we're going to put a lot of emphasis on our small groups and discipleship. Uh, we've noticed that during this season, that is significantly important because if you don't have that community, it's really easy to feel disconnected from the community. So the more we can focus on small groups and having people together in fellowship in God's Word, the stronger people are going to feel connected to what God is doing at Grace. Um, we're also going to do a lot of talk about this idea of spiritual conversations. Uh, if you use the word evangelism, people are like, oh man, I can't do evangelism. That's, that's, like, that's a big word and I don't understand it. And, and, but if we just say, you know what, we're going to have talk about how do we have a spiritual conversation with someone where we talk about our faith. Just how do you talk to someone in a spiritual conversation? And, and Luther and Our Ministries has done some amazing work on this. And uh, we're going to be, uh, there's a seminar taking place in March at Brookfield Lutheran that we're going to be partnering to work with. We're going to do a sermon series on that. We're going to talk about how do we have spiritual conversations to share the gospel with people. And then, um, if you remember that uh, we were working through a process called Upward Onward. It was a strategic planning process. It included the facility expansion and then March 15th and COVID hit, and that kind of came to a grinding halt. And uh, we're going to be picking that back up again, and we want you again to be a part of the process. So if you remember our mission statement, Grace is a Family Growing in Christ While Reaching Out in Love came out of that. Now we're on the process of asking the question, so what does that look like in what are the ministries that are significantly important and the ministry opportunities that are significantly important for Grace to fulfill our mission statement? If that's really what we want to be, what should we be about? What should we be doing? Where, where should we be putting our resources and our time? And so uh, we're going to send out an email and invitations to you to be a part of this. Uh, there's going to be, what is it, one, two, three, four, five different opportunities for you to gather together for this. And we're going to offer those both in person and virtual. They're going to be, uh, it's a Wednesday, October 7th, a Thursday, October 8th, Saturday, October 10th, and Sunday, October 11th at 9.15 and 1 o'clock. And no, it is not a Packer game day, it's a bye week. So we did look at that ahead of time. So, so we wanted to have that. We're going to ask you to RSVP so we can group people together. And uh, then it's called a congregational creative event to really discuss grace as we look at what it's going to look like going forward. So, so there is obviously a lot going on and uh, a lot that we have planned for the future. But uh, we just kind of wanted to give you a brief overview of a lot of what's been going on here Obviously, a lot more going on behind the scenes, uh, but we wanted to share that with you and then open things up so that if you have questions about this, uh, you could ask your questions. Yeah, Bob. What do you mean by the ministry facility? Oh, the building. That's what you're talking about? Yeah, the facility, the building, yes. As to what? So, at some point, we want to move the school ministry and expand our facility, our campus, so that we're one campus again. Anything else? Well, obviously, we'll be doing things that we'll be looking at all our needs. That's the upward-onward process. So if during that process we discover that there's a need for more children's ministry space or small group Bible study space or for care ministry and counseling space or adult ministry space, then we'll be taking all those factors together as we come up with a full site master plan and then the phases because we won't be able to build it all at once the different phases yeah the gradual way in which we put it together other questions yeah yeah Send the family a card? Oh, for people to know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, I mean, we could look at maybe putting that under our care ministry section or something like that on the website. But, uh, 
but yeah, I mean, we put it in the Grace New so that if you get the email, the email always includes that. So we do have that ever as a part of the emails. Because, or it should be, I think it is in the, I'd have to look, but I think we have that prayer section, or if that's not part of it, we can look at that. But I know when it put up on the website too, if you look at the Grace News on the website, or the one that you would pick up, that backside has the prayers, so they're usually in there. The only time they don't get in there is if that death happens after the printing of it or the putting together of it. So... Other questions? Yeah. What was the last part? I didn't hear the last part. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why we're very aware of that for our teaching staff because to be able to do both because, I mean, we would never be, yes, what? Oh, what's the question? Very good. So the question was, how many of our students are going virtual this year? So I'll let that one go first. So how many are going virtual? About a dozen in the entire school. So about 12 in the entire school. And then the, do the teachers need to do, are they going to be doing both? And yes, they are because uh, we're not at a place where financially we can just go, let's just like add staff to take that on and, and that's just not where we're at. And so we understand that what we're trying to do is manage expectations for those that are going virtual, right? That, that it's not gonna be the same experience as in person, nor the same access to a teacher because we value our teachers and, and we, want our, we want the understanding that, that we're not asking our teachers to do two jobs. And that's not fair, nor is it right because we want to care greatly for our teachers and their families. Our, our teachers are our sons and daughters, their moms and dads, their you know, their husbands and wives. They're like like they have families, and so we value that family. And at Grace, one of our values is we're a family, right? And so we say at Grace that family always comes first. And so we want to make sure that we value that for our teachers. So it it is it's very delicate. It's it's very complex right now, but we are going to continue to manage through that because we put a great emphasis on we want to take care of our teachers. Absolutely. And the same thing is true for all our staff. I mean, I think about the same thing for Christine and, and for Bill. I mean, we have all these services that have to get online, and we have Jam and Thrive and Ignite, and so they're doing plans for both in-person and virtual, and the complexity of doing all of that. I mean, so, so we, we've had this idea, and I'm just going to be honest about this, there's been an idea that during this season, it's been really nice for the ministry staff, meaning all of our ministry staff, teachers, and everybody, because by going virtual, it hasn't been a lot nicer to be at home a lot more. <laughs> Can I tell you, it's been the opposite of that. For our staff, this season hasn't meant putting less time in, it's meant putting more time in. Our teachers have had to put more time in. Bill and Christine and Deb and Christiana and Zach and, and our whole staff has had to put more time in. And, um, you know, and we have not, I've heard this comment in a couple places, so I just want to dispel this. Our staff have not had their hours reduced. <laughs> so um, we had a couple staff who've, who've been asked, oh, so you had your hours reduced. No, we have not had our hours reduced. Uh, we didn't reduce staff hours. And, and so it, it's been more. And so praying for our staff is a huge blessing to us during a time like this because we've been asking them to do more because of all the complexity with this. And so, so we have to manage that tension and it is difficult to do that. Other questions? None? All right. Well, why don't we finish with the Lord's Prayer and we can go on our way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you everyone for coming. Have a wonderful day.